Character creation is going nuts. Hello my friends and how are you doing? I got my Star Wars shirt on and then also have a new cup. The world is your oyster. How cool is that? I love really good looking cups. But anyways, Ideogram has a new tool for character creation where you can upload one photo and then you can create with that image, with that likeness, or you can remix other pictures also with that likeness, or you can in-paint that in a very easy way into all kinds of pictures also with that likeness. So you can do very, very much, very, very good, very, very much, very, very good. Anyways, let's get started right now. Okay, so here we are on Ideogram and thankfully it has a very easy interface because life is too complex as it is. So um, here you can find a lot of images and when you click on any of those, of course, it gives you all of the parameters here of the prompt and the style and so on. So that is already pretty cool, but we want to do something else today. So what we want to do is to create an image with a character, in this case, of course, myself. So the only thing you need to do here is to drag that into here. And then you see it's asking you character style describe. So you can click here on character reference. So it's creating this as a character. And this will then also be in your character library, right? And then afterwards, you can, for example, write any kind of prompt you want to have here, and this will create the image for you. Also here, you can select if this is going to be public or private. You have here a lot of different ratios. That is pretty cool. Landscape and portrait with a preview. I like that a lot because often you see the ratio, but you can't really imagine what it is. So here you can ideally see what that is. So that is very, very good. Then you have here also the selection of the model. You have here MP, which is magic prompt on or off. So it's helping you with the prompt. And then you can also have here say a uh, style selection, realistic or fiction. So I'm writing here a bold bearded Viking warrior standing in a forest at night, full moon, cinematic light. Let's click on generate and see what we get. So the generation happens down here in the corner, which is not ideal for us. So we can actually go over to creations and there we have the images that have been created. So here you can see the uploaded image of myself which looks like that. Beard could be a little bit nicer, but well, I am often not going to the barber. So this is how I just look on a photo. Deal with it. Anyways, when we go here to the Viking, that roughy scruffy beard actually is good for the Viking because, well, they not sure if they had a lot of barbers, but you can clearly see that this is me and it has all of my details from the face, even like for the details of the eyes or the, like this dark spot here that I wanted to have removed. I'm gonna do this in this autumn. And then here you have another image where I am as a Viking in the forest. Actually, it's not nighttime. I've just realized that it's daytime. All right, so I actually found a solution to the problem. I had to fiddle around a little bit. So I wanna show you how to actually get that running because there are some pretty cool functions here. So the first thing you want to do actually is you want to go up here and just start by creating an image. So in that case, I'm writing Viking standing in a very dark forest at night, nighttime stars in the sky. However, you can do something more and that is going down here where you have color palettes you can choose from, but you can also create your own color custom palette down here. So you can see I have selected two dark blue and dark gray colors for my image to generate that image. After that image has been generated, you can check it out and see if you like it and then you can actually remix that image. So you want to click and drag and this will give you the drop your image to upload here. So drag it here and then select remix from these buttons. After you've selected remix, it's going to write a prompt for you. Now you have to read through the prompt in my case because here it says the warrior has long blonde braided hair. I don't have that. So I want to exchange this 
for saying for saying a bald head and full beard. Now for the remix, it's 50%. That is too low for our purpose. We want to go with 75%. You can type that in here. Then you click on character. You select your character you want to have. And then you can go and render. And then out of the four images, you can simply select the best one you get. I think this one is pretty amazing. And that one is also very cool. However, there is way more you can do on Ideogram with this character tool. The next thing I want to do is to go to the canvas. So here I have an empty big canvas and here I can actually drag images into the canvas. So for that, I'm simply going to drag an image into the canvas. With that, I want to put myself into this position here so that just the head is replaced. For that, we need to have the magic fill. On the left side, we have here the magic fill tool. You click on that and then you have here multiple tools like the rectangle tool, the lasso tool. You have also a brush you can use here with different sizes. You can paint in what you want to replace. Now, personally, what I found out here is that if you mask out only the hat, the hat is going to be a little bit too big and a little bit in the wrong position. So what you want to do instead is to select a bigger area around the hat like so. And then up here you click on next because the first step is just for mass generation. Then you want to click here again on character and selecting your character. And you can give a little description up here if you want. For example, in my case, again, bald bearded men, just because otherwise it might create hair in my case. And this is taking a little bit before it's creating the new version for me. When I click on that, this opens up this sidebar here, which gives me the information, but also gives me the four different versions. So in this case, the head is looking at me. So to turn the head to the side, what I did is write in my prompt, bald bearded man, he's looking to the side. And by the way, if you want to retry, up here is the retry button. You simply click on that. And then you see here, you can adjust the prompt, click on magic fill. And this is going to create four new versions for you. You can also have a lot of fun with this. For example, I can drag in here this meme. And then again, I go to magic fill up here. I go in this case to the brush and I select the size I want to have for the brush. I paint out the head because in this case it's in a specific position. And then up I click on next and just going to write here meme in this case and click on magic fill. And a couple of seconds later, I am in that image with my face Four different versions you can choose from to see with different face expressions and such. You can, of course, also write the face expressions into the prompt. And of course, you can paint yourself also into the second image here. No problem. However, we also talked about remixing with your face. And that is actually another option that might even give you more coherent results. So for that, again, I'm going to drag the image in here. That's the image. And then I'm clicking here on remix. Remix is automatically generating a description of the image for me. And I'm going to select the character I want to have in here. Again, you want to look through the prompt and I inserted here instead of subject the bald bearded man. And then I simply click here on remix. By the way, one thing to point out here is the image you remix has the same ratio of the original image. So make sure when you upload an image to remix, it has the ratio you want to have. So again, this has created four images for me. In this case, because we had 50% for the input image, you can see that the composition is quite different, even though this comes pretty close. But the overall style and tone and clothing and even gadgets like the gold chain and the watch are here. Now here I set the value of the image that we want to remix to 75. And in that case, it sticks way closer to the input image. So that is pretty cool. By the way, here's an intermission to compare this to other tools, namely Flux, Flux Context, and then also Higgsfield Soul with 
the character trainer. So here, first of all, we have a result that has been generated with flux context. This is using two images as the input. First, we have the professional photo as an input, and then also we have the photo of me as an input to combine that, and we're using a prompt with that to create the scene. Now, the scene looks beautiful, even though the details are not completely there. Flux context is kind of strange about that, kind of like low resolution that it gives as an output or it looks grainy or pixelated but also that character doesn't quite look like me so that is a big problem and no matter how often I tried I couldn't really get it to look like me. Now here we have also another image that has been generated with flux context. In this case I used a night photo of a forest and then again a photo of me to create me as a viking in a forest holding an axe and that is quite good, but at the same time also a little bit strange. The light looks pretty staged. The light on my head is way too bright for a night photo. And overall, it doesn't look realistic like, like I'm actually in the forest. And then if we use only flux, the result doesn't look like me. It is not a night photo, even though the prompt says that. So this doesn't work at all. And also, as you can see, I'm kind of wearing a sweater and a hoodie and then these kind of like shoulder armors here. So that doesn't work at all. Now, when we go over to the Higgs field image generation where I can use the image as a prompt, this actually gives me some pretty nice results. So here you can see a result of that. I'm looking a little bit chubby in the face, but it's okay. It looks like me. It looks like a photo. Actually, this is a fantastic result. The only downside here, the difference is that you actually need about 20 photos of the subject to create yourself. And then at the same time, it doesn't look 100% like the photos. And this is what Ideogram is doing, that it actually looks down to the detail like the photo and that is actually pretty impressive. Let me know what you think in the comments. Leave a like if you enjoyed that video. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye!